Hello everyone. Okay, so um, Georgie here again. I'm going to um, be checking out these 20 minute videos every day, mostly about trying to get myself a bit more comfortable with doing this. I'm not, if you can tell. Um, I'm going to repeat a little bit of what I've done over the last couple of days, um, just to get a bit of familiarity uh, going. Um, and um, yeah, if anybody has any questions, then feel free to make comments and I'll um, I'll try and get on, get respond to you at the end rather than interrupting things as we go through it. So, hi Sam, nice to see you. Okay, so one of the things I noticed about this Facebook portal, um, so I'm going to start moving while I talk, is that it's sort of, it's really clever the way it, it pans in and out and follows me around, which is great, but it can, it can cut off my hands and feet sometimes when I want you to see them, so... Until I've worked out how to sort that out, um, I'm going to try and stick to stuff that you can actually see. <laughs> so what I'm doing here is, um, these are a few hand and wrist mobilizations that are actually from the Animal Flow um, warm-up. And I'm going to be checking out a few Animal Flow tasters as well for you guys to check out what that is. Um, but in the meantime, these I use these in all of my classes because they're just really useful wrist mobilizations. They are great to prep you for weight bearing on your hands um, and mobilizing the joints um, and connective tissue and all that kind of thing but um, also um, yeah just if you've been sat at your desk typing all day or if you've been sat reading in the garden all day because it's a really nice day for that isn't it um, you know if you're in lockdown and you've been still for quite a while then these mobilizations are just a great way to get blood flow going to the extremities so if there is any one bit of you that doesn't move as well as you would like it to or if there is um, just one joint in your body that doesn't have its full range of motion there is there's going to be parts of you that are not receiving blood flow so really useful to just kind of throw these in as you can see I'm just kind of kneeling on the ground here you can do these when you sat at your desk you can do them when you sat in your chair little movement snacks I call them telly snacks you can you can add a little bit of movement when even when you're sort of being sedentary um, okay so I'm going to think about the um, neck muscles as well which tend to tense up so kind of feel that you're keeping your rib cage still if I show you from the side, you want to kind of think of the front of your ribs being level with your pelvis so we're not lifting or dropping the ribs too much. They're just kind of stacked on top of your pelvis. And if you just drop your chin and let your head hang, you're not doing a great deal here, but what you're doing is releasing the tense muscles in the back of your neck that tend to work really hard if your head is in a forward position. And you can gently rotate your head and that will shift which muscles in the back of your neck are being stretched or lengthened. And I'm going to turn the other way. So that's a really nice thing to do if you, you know, if you are sat at a computer for a while or if you don't realise, you know, if, if you sort of tend to get... That, that forward head position where the back of your neck shortens. So the head ramp is basically where you're tucking your chin and pulling your head back a little bit to lengthen these. And the head hang is just kind of releasing these muscles here that tend to tense if your head is forwards a little bit. So if you have neck, shoulder, back problems, you might want to pay attention to where your head tends to sit. Um, okay, so coming on to the neck and shoulders, if I put my arm out to the side here, I'm going to keep my arm bent, my palm up towards the ceiling, and I'm going to let my head drop to the other side. Ceiling, sky. <laughs> um, so what I'm trying to do here is make sure that I don't move the whole of me in a side bend. I'm not doing a little teapot motion. I'm trying to keep my collarbones level so that the two variables that are moving are my arm and my head. So I'm going to let them relax away from each other to provide, this is what's called a stretch under load. So I'm using my limbs as a load to provide tension here, which is allowing these to, these muscles here in the neck to, to lengthen. 
So then I can move my head forwards, back, maybe add a little bit of rotation. So we'll all be tethered in slightly different places. So you'll, you'll be tighter in certain different positions. So if you find a real juicy spot, it's like, yeah, that's really tight. You could stay there and breathe into it. But it's good to, to keep it moving as well. So you can change the arm position. And then give your shoulders a little roll. Let's have a go on the other side. So I'm going to take my arm out to the side. Elbow stays bent. That's important. Arm is relaxed and heavy. Collarbones stay level. I'm going to drop my head to the side and just allow them to provide a load that these muscles around my neck have to have to bear. And you might want to play around with the amount of rotation that you're adding to that as well. So if I move my head forwards, back, turn it slightly, that might vary it. I can change the position of my arm. If you imagine you're pouring a bottle of water behind you without letting everything else move as well, then you're going to create more what we call external rotation at the shoulder. So that's going to give you more stretch. Okay, and again, just give that a little roll. Go back to your right hand, take it behind you. Or whichever hand you didn't just do. Um, keep the back of your hand in contact with the, with the rib cage. Um, and again, think about keeping your ribs stacked over your pelvis. So you're not lifting the chest. You're not going to side bend as you drop your head to the side. Now, if I apply a little bit of pressure into my rib cage, if I press my hand into my back, that increases the stretch for me. And you could also lengthen your chin up towards the ceiling. I keep talking about the ceiling. I'm used to being in a room. The sky. <laughs> well, you might be inside. I don't know. Whatever. And move your head in slightly different positions. Hi, folks, if you've just joined. Um... And again, in this internally rotated position, I'm going to flip my palm now. So I'm going to turn around again for you to see. I'm going to roll over my thumb. So I'm turning my hand that way. If that means you have to bring your hand quite a lot lower or wider, that's fine. Um, and again, feel like you're, for me, I like to feel like I'm pulling my ribs back a little bit. And you can come into that same head motion. Feel that like you lift your chin a little bit press your hand into your back all right and let's have a go on the other side so take your left hand or whichever hand you didn't just do bring it behind your back in line with your spine apply a little bit of pressure if that feels good or don't you know if you've already got enough stretch getting your hand back there then just kind of leave it as it is let your head drop to the right make sure that the whole of you didn't side bend that you're keeping your collarbones level your ribs stacked over your pelvis Move your head around a little bit. Let your chin lengthen up. Flip your palm if you want to. You can leave it where it was. That's also an option. All right, and then let that go. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reach my shoulders forward. So I'm going to cross my arms over here. And I'm, I'm trying to reach for the edge of my shoulder blades. If you're just going in that direction. If you can't reach the edge of your shoulder blades, that's cool. Now, can you see how high my arms are here? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my shoulders down whilst trying to keep my fingertips in contact with the scapulas, the shoulder blades. Um, and I'm also going to try and pull my ribs back a little bit here so I'm, I'm deliberately pulling my rib cage back as i reach my shoulder blades forwards and that's giving me a nice stretch in the mid back just between the shoulder blades and you can drop your head and let your chin roll side to side and then just give that again a little roll around we're going to go opposite side so bring your opposite arm on top reach your fingertips um, towards your shoulder blades, pull your shoulders down as far as you can, pull the ribs back into your shoulder blades, so you'll feel that there's that little gap between your shoulder blades where we tend to dip a little bit, you want to feel like you're trying to fill that space, 
and again you can let your head gently move around as it rolls forwards okay and give your shoulders a roll so they're all things that you can totally do just seated so if you've been at a computer or you've been sat around don't even need to get up to do those things and they're going to help uh, bring a little bit of blood flow a little bit of nutrition into the bits of you that don't move as as regularly as um they ought perhaps all right so i'm going to think a little bit about hips because i tend to get really tight i feel really tight around the front of my hips so um and that's exacerbated when i've been sat a lot so i'm going to swing one leg forwards um so the important thing for you to no, is if you sort of take a look down, you want your your front leg, you want it to be roughly in a right angle, maybe even just a slightly greater angle than a right angle. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tuck my pelvis under. I'm not particularly thinking about squeezing anything, just moving my pelvis in that direction might already give you a bit of a stretch in the front. So I've got my right leg forwards. You might feel stretch in the front of the left hip. Um, so then keeping everything here stacked nicely, um, you don't want to lean, you don't want to let your ribs lead or your pelvis come out of alignment. You're keeping the pelvis tucked under and you're just going to let everything nudge forwards a little bit. So I, I sort of put my foot in a slightly bigger than a, slightly further than a right angle so that as I move forwards I end up still with my knee stacked over my ankle. And then you can lift your left arm, so I've got my right foot forwards, I'm going to lift my left arm up and I'm going to come into a little lean and that will increase that stretch in the front of your left thigh and hip. And I quite like to keep things dynamic because that keeps your brain concentrating on what you're doing, it keeps the, um, the sensation shifting, which is continuously providing information for your brain to process, which is where movement has its value, right? If you're concentrating on what you're doing. Um, so I'm kind of just letting my weight shift, um, I'm sort of leaning, twisting, wriggling a little bit, um, just to, again, to find where, where am I tethered the most? Where is my connective tissue the tightest? All right, and then let's uh, twist that around, come to the other side. So I'm taking a big step with my left foot. I'm going to drop my tailbone under. And that might already give you stretch in the front of that right hip. Making sure that you keep your rib cage stacked over your pelvis. Let that nudge forwards a bit. Can you see that I'm, I, everything here is, is, is like one unit that's moving. I'm not leaning. So check in with yourselves whether you're leaning or whether you've gone really far into kind of like a bit of a yoga lunge, which totally has value. And I love doing them too, but it's not what we're doing right now. We're trying to keep your tailbone under, your ribs stacked and everything moves forwards just like that. And then I'm going to take my right arm, or the opposite arm to this front leg, if you've done the different side to me. Um, and I'm going to come into that lean over. And try not to stay too static in, in a stretch. Um, by keeping it moving and keeping it active, I quite like to feel the pressure of that front foot into the ground as well. There's lots of little things that you can take your mind to when you're you're stretching like this. Cool. All right, so another little stretch that we did yesterday um, that is one of my favorites to, to get my hips moving is um so i like to start in this kneeling position i've got my toes tucked um and i'm going to keep my pelvis neutral and i'm going to just rock back so that my hips go back towards my heels and do a little shift side to side so these are just gentle all over joint mobilizations that really what we're doing here is we're kind of we're in a we're in a supported deep squat position so i'm i'm not load bearing i'm i'm just leaning back to provide my joints with that that pressure without having to um hold my weight because i've got my hands on the ground 
And then I'm going to take my knees wide, my feet, I know you can't see my feet there, I'm still working this out, folks. But my feet are dropped out to the side, basically. So I'm in a frog stretch. And again, you can just do a little rock back and forwards. No, I'm not doing anything like a child's pose, so I'm not letting my pelvis round. I'm keeping my pelvis neutral and my ribs stacked in line with my pelvis. And none of this is changing as I move forwards and back. Um, and you can come down onto your elbows. It's a great inner thigh groin stretch. Um, so what I'm going to come into now is adding a little bit more hamstring. So I'm going to, so I'm, I'm, I've got my knees on the ground. I'm going to turn so that my right leg straightens. I know you can't see my toes, folks, but uh, my toes are pointing up towards the sky um, as I shift my pelvis back. And then I'm going to drop that knee down and switch sides. So you can alternate like that. You can keep it really small like this. So you've got lots of points of contact with the ground. If you have the mobility to come all the way down, you can. You can keep your hands on the floor. You don't need to have your hands off the ground. Um, okay, so something else that I think is really useful is practicing getting up and down from the ground. So I'm sat here with my legs crossed. I've got my left leg in front. So if you guys um, cross your legs with your left leg in front, and then I'm going to bring my fingertips to the ground on the side of my right knee. So I'm going to use that to pivot so that I can stand up. So coming back down again, I'm going to hinge forwards. You can let your knees bend as much as you need. Bring your fingertips to the ground and twist. So you're just kind of pivoting until your bum lands on the floor. So I've ended up with my left foot on the outside again. So hands down, twist, and bring yourselves up again. Just getting up and down. Different ways of getting up and down from the ground are really useful as well. So I'm going to go the opposite way now. So I'm going to let my knees bend. I'm going to bring my fingertips to the ground. And which way am I going to twist? I'm going to twist this way so that my right leg ends up on the outside. And I'm going to bring my hands to the floor near my left leg now. Press into the ground, twist and come up. And do that one more time so I can come back down. So I'm going to twist this way so that my right leg ends up on the outside. And I'll pivot around. Um, few little hand stretches again. So we did these yesterday, but useful as a reminder. I'm just going to keep my elbow bent, my um, elbow quite close to my waist. My palm is facing up and I'm just individually stretching each finger and the thumb. The thumb individually on its own, you can make a hitchhiker thumb position. Again, keep your arm roughly in line with the shoulder. Draw the thumb back. Keep your hand still as you wiggle it side to side. And I'm going to go other side again. Pull the thumb back. Make sure that as you pull the thumb back, you're not pulling your whole hand. You're keeping everything else nice and still. Wiggle the thumb side to side. Bring the backs of your hands together. Um, shoulders are relaxed. Let your elbows be heavy, but don't let your hands come apart because that kind of defeats the object. So you're going to keep the backs of your wrists in contact. And you, you might find that if you drop your hands lower, that's more accessible. So if your wrists are really tight, then just kind of work out where you need to be to to get it to work. And another little stretch that you can have a go at if you make a fist and wrap your thumbs around the outside, make sure you're keeping your index finger nice and tight. Contact your knuckles. Don't let your index finger go. And then drop the backs of your wrists together or the backs of your hands together. 
and just kind of move it around a little bit there. Check in with yourself if your shoulders ended up up here. See if you can drop them down and relax them. And then we're going to mobilize the wrists here as well. So I mean, to imagine you've got a magnetic band around your wrist that you're trying to keep in contact at some point throughout this wrist rotation. And I'm stretching and spreading my fingers as much as I can here. And then here I'm curling them in so I can bring them back. Stretch, spread, straighten the arms and curl them in. And then let's go the other way. Okay, folks, nice 20 little, 20 minute little movement snack. If you have any questions, let me know if there's any particular subject you'd like me to cover whilst I'm doing these freebies and getting used to this whole online world, then um, that would be great. And uh, if not, see you all tomorrow. All right, thanks very much. Bye.